from Collector Chassis and welcome to another episode of Story Behind the Collector and today we have a little bit of a different uh, context to our Story Behind the Collector. We're going to be talking to AJ, the owner of Autocraft, which is a BMW specialist. AJ is also a very big collector. He's got some E30s and one of his specialties is actually putting the S52 or the S54 motor, which for those of you that are familiar with BMW comes with the E46. He's uh, excellent at putting that motor in the E30. Um, so we're going to be talking to uh, one of his clients, Raymond. And Raymond's got just a fantastic E30. He's got an S52 conversion on it. And uh, Raymond, would you like to come in and uh, introduce yourself? Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, Raymond, uh, this car is just fantastic. Uh, I love the color and everything. So, can you give us a little history about the car and why you did the conversion? Because for some people, it's an E30, which is, uh, you leave it original, right? Correct. And so, the reason for that was, but first, when I uh, when I purchased this car, um, I got the car at a, at a, at a uh, my mother had a, a garage sale. And so I passed by the, the house, and uh, she had stuff on the on the driveway. And then when I looked inside the garage, this car was sitting in the back of the garage. So I approached the mom, and just to find out if the car was for sale, she told me that yeah, this, she needed the car out because she was cleaning out the house and was going to put it up for sale. And so what happened was that she called the son. The son wasn't around because he lives someplace else, and I asked her. Uh, in touch with him. She called him on the phone and he came over about an hour later. I asked him if he was uh, interested in selling the car because I did race uh, the M3 back in 91. I was uh, racing for IMSA. So this car was a very interest to me, a lot of interest to me. So uh, not showing my interest to the guy, I said, if the car starts, I'm interested in purchasing the car. Well, he came out and said, well, it is going to start because I, you know, the car is so reliable. So. Uh, he went inside, started the car, and he said, "Okay, how much are you going to offer me?" I said, "Ah, well, about two thousand." Mm -hmm. So he said, and "This was me, a few years ago." This right? was yeah, back in '95, and so okay. I owned the car since. Um, but he said to me, "No, you got to do a little better than that." So I, I offered him twenty-six hundred dollars, get it out of the garage, just clean out the garage because mom was interested in, in cleaning out the house. Uh -huh. So uh, he said, "Okay, whatever." So he, I gave him twenty-six hundred dollars on the spot. Not knowing the guy didn't know that I had a flatbed already, I was going to purchase the car regardless of what number he threw at me. Yeah, first it was reasonable. So um, sure enough, when he said that, uh, yeah, okay, it's a deal. Let's get it out. I, I, I can't have it. My mom is bothering me too much. Uh, mm -hmm. I have my boy in the, in the flatbed right around the corner. <laughs> you had him hiding around. I the had right him right hiding around the corner. Because <laughs> you said, had the lowest price uh, yeah, possible, exactly, right? Exactly. So when I threw the number around, he accepted him, and I was like, ready. <laughs> so. Uh, that happened, and so yeah. they didn't know. have cell phones then. So what no did you, you just run to the beep corner? Them. I put it with a beeper. <laughs> yeah, just uh, and right away he came around and uh, he knew it was, uh, what I meant. So uh -huh. yeah, he picked up the car and brought it to AJ. As a matter of fact. Now, and what so, kind of condition was the car in then? Because uh, I don't know if uh, it was in this exact condition or similar. No, it was the same. The color was the same, original color. Okay. So uh, the way I picked up the car. I had to fix the, the, uh, the guy was a heavy guy. Mm -hmm. So the seat, the, the driver's seat was split. Because the sides were split because he was, he was a big guy. Yeah. And so I had that, I had the front seats uh, done over. Um, 
So then I proceeded to, um, I didn't like the way it was, the, the way the paint looked on the car. Mm -hmm. So I decided just to do, you know what, if I'm gonna have this car, what I paid for the car was worth just having the car repainted completely because I wanted that. Yeah. I was so in love with the, uh, with the version of Because the we're going back to 1995, right? So Correct. no one really knew the popularity of the ether and what would happen years later. Fast forward to 2022, right? Exactly. The so, love, yeah, the love for me was because I raced the car in Ninja back yeah. in 91. So that was the... Were you factory, uh, factory racer then? You were I wasn't a factory, factory racer, but I was I was racing the, the guy that was racing for the factory in the U.S. Okay. And so I, had, I was you know, I, I was renting a ride from them. And so that's how I got into it. Ah, uh, gotcha. So let's jump to the engine and we're going to want to open the hood and take a look at it. But why did you swap the engine? And it looks like you swapped a few other things. So this is really, I guess, what we would classify today as like a Resco mod then? Correct. So you wanted to make it more drivable and modern? So what happened is that street drive in this car with the engine that it, that it came with, the 2.3 uh, S14, it wasn't as comfortable as, for me to enjoy this car, I had to take it out on the road, uh, uh, meaning Southern State Parkway in New York and or uh, long roads in order for me to enjoy the drive, drivability of this car. Okay. Because the engine that it has, driving it from light to light or local streets, it wasn't enjoyable. So to put the S52 in there was more of a street, comfortable drive, driving the car, drivability for this car was appealing to me. Okay. So the S14 on a, on a day to day on the street was not, was not comfortable. It was too much of a whining, uh, it was a slow, Unless you open up that car on the road, on a long road, it wasn't enjoyable. Okay. Did you keep the engine then? Do you still have Unfortunately, it? Unfortunately, I didn't because okay. when I could do the swap, somebody uh, offered me 10000 for the original engine, which I should have kept. Wow. No matter what, because wow. it was so rare. Now, when did you do the swap? What year was uh, that? Then? That's about 15 years ago. Okay. Wow, so, that's big money 15 yeah. years ago. Exactly. So, to me, to do the swap, it was me. I think AJ did the whole thing for me for about $6,000. Yeah, wow. So back then, mm -hmm. not knowing or you know, we just AJ in those days was trying new things. And so yeah, that was uh, you know that's when people started to do swaps and, and he took over on that. And he's, you know. So it sounds like AJ was really more of a pioneer in doing the swaps. Correct. E thirties. And I was the guinea pig back in the ah, days. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, let's so open one the hood. Let's and open so, the hood and see what it looks like so, because. Uh, I'm dying to find out. And he did a great job when he did the... Uh... Back in the days, AJ was also racing. And so okay. he was racing this motor. Um, and so now he is, always wanted to go is, faster. Is this a stock S52 then? No, it's not a stock S52, but it's uh, it's got uh, racing components in there. Uh, okay. And so he built this to for his race car. Uh, then wanted to climb to a different class. He, took, he, switched, he swapped engines from this one to to a bigger motor, faster motor on the for the race car, and had this for sale with very okay. little miles. So I think he had three races on it, and so you know from a, a fresh uh, fresh build. So do you know what kind of horsepower that this S52 is generating? I think this is producing almost 300 horsepower. Okay. For the weight of the car versus yeah. what's what kind of horsepower is on this engine? This car is it's, it's, it's drivability is it's insane. Really, it really well, moves. And then you added this uh, bar here, this sway bar, I guess is what we call it. Yeah. Exactly. Just for That's, suspension and, and, and stability on the... Uh, that thing's monstrous. That looks like... Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it looks like... Is that over-engineered or is that uh, perfect for the car? No, it's perfect for the car because it, it keeps the car very rigid, very, very strong. So what else did you do to the car then besides the motor? And uh, I see just you got cleaning a it up, I put a, a different yeah. air uh, box, air box just to make it look clean and so it's just my version of this I mean you know this car is just my, my passion so I kind of keep it as it's my baby so uh, I also have other cars and so BMW to me this is uh, you know, one of the pristine or one of the cars that is more uh, attracts a lot of because it's so rare yeah uh, the entry it's a 1988 so it's just uh, and it's a rare car. Uh, yellow lights on the front. Those are the running lights, correct? Right? Right. Correct. Okay. Uh, and those look good. It, it gives it a nice. So nice anything to make this car look different the most. Well, uh, I think you've achieved it. 
Yeah, I tried. I tried. So, uh -huh. you know, again, owning the car for so many years, I can only tell you, like, I'm only trying to make it look better. And so whatever, whatever I can get uh, from original BMW uh, parts that would make the car look different, I, I would go for that. So are you doing anything competitively with this car since racing's in your blood? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. This uh, car is not being abused at all. It's, it's in my garage. This is my garage. It's, it's a garage queen at the moment. Okay. Uh, only, this this only, is your second love or maybe your first love? This is my, uh, I think my first between a Porsche 911 Turbo S uh, okay. and this. Uh, this gets more attention than, the, uh, than that Porsche. Yeah. yeah. Also have a BMW wagon, 535 XI. Anything yeah. BMW. It's, it's the BMW racing, mm -hmm. whatever that comes up with it. Well, I'm racing. sure a lot of our fans uh, are not that familiar with the S52 or the S54 motor and, and what a, a, it's actually stroked. So would you like to start it up and we can hear what it sounds sure. like? Sure. Let me show you. original cars. Today we're going to do something a little special. Uh, we're going to um, have a collector of BMWs who's also into modifying BMWs and I'm uh, standing in front of a very special E30 and uh, AJ would you like to come in and uh, say hello? Nice to meet you. How you doing? Real good. All right. This is AJ the owner of this fantastic E30. Um, AJ can you tell us a little bit about it? How you started and how you got into the BMW E30? As a kid growing up in Jamaica, I loved the BMW and all the farm cars. I originally was racing R7s. Okay. So I started racing Mazdas, I raced for SCCA, I raced for Emir, I raced for NASA. Yeah. And eventually, you know, they were saying the cars, they didn't want the old car. Were you racing professionally then? Yes, I did SCCA Pro racing for a while. Oh, okay, great. You know? So, you know, it came to the point where the Mazdas were performing well against the new manufacturers, and the mm -hmm. manufacturers didn't like it. So they eventually kind of make the rules where the Mazda was not competitive. Okay. So the next car for me that was a competitive car that was financially feasible was a BMW. And what year was this approximately? This was around 1990. Okay. So uh, this E30 in 1990 was not really a collector car yet, right? At that point, there wasn't a spotlight on the car. Yeah. But as the years go by and the rarity of it, people start to see how it is. Mm -hmm. And it just skyrocketed, especially in the last couple of years. Yeah. But you could have bought one of these cars back in the 90s for 4000 3000 Wow. Now they're in the six figures. They are, yeah. amazingly. Yeah. All original uh, go for the six figures. Now, what you did is something a little special because you took an all original car, right? What was the condition of this car when you bought it? Was it was pretty much on the same condition except they had a blown motor, but all okay. stock. So the same, uh, you haven't repainted this car though? This car's been repainted 14 years ago. Okay, all right. You know, so, but like I said, the body condition was pretty much how you see that, just reconditioned the body. Mm -hmm. New panel, new doors, new hood, new bumper. I actually make it what it's called, there's a model called the Evo 3 in Europe. 
Okay. So this is a replica of the Evo 3, which is even an even rarer edition. Yeah. And the Evo 3 version of this E30 M3, what was special about that? It had it was lighter, correct? It was and lighter. It had uh, bigger wheel arches, had the indicator light for the bigger wheel, the 16-inch wheel. Okay. Um, all the seals for aerodynamics. It was basically a car that was made to run in the DTM series. Okay. And you had to make a certain amount to compete in the series. So they made that special edition, mm -hmm. you know, with the rear corner, the front spoiler, the seals, and, you know, a couple other little performance enhancing stuff. Okay. Was it hard to find parts then to bring it up to an Evo uh, uh, tribute? Back in the 90s, it wasn't. Okay. Now, majority of the parts are not available. Okay, so they're all bought up by collectors and speculators. And yeah, the hood, you can't even buy the hood for the car anymore. No kidding, wow. Yeah, the bumper, they go for about $1,800. Holy smokes. So it's, it's, it's one thing to have the car, it's another thing to try and get it back to the original condition when you yeah. can't get the parts. So you had an original car, then you started to uh, add all the Evo 3 uh components to it to make it an evo 3 tribute car yes and then you went even further than that correct yeah well you know i wanted more power mm -hmm. because the average car today your mom goes together has 300 horsepower yeah and this car originally came with what kind of an engine a four cylinder okay a four cylinder is probably 180 190 this car mm -hmm. you know it wasn't that much um, so i wanted to have more fun i wanted to enjoy the car yeah for today's lifestyle so that led me to Put all the modern era stuff in the E46 M3 motor, the 6 speed transmission, 1 series brakes, uh, M coupe rear control arms. So I basically I wanted to put all BMW parts on the car. Mm -hmm. That were period correct. That were period correct. So you would actually go to any BMW dealer mm -hmm. and order parts and buy parts for this. Except for the no longer available parts. Right. But the brakes are all factory. Gearbox is factory, you know, everything is factory. Okay. So the non factory items then that really enhance the car, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, you have these BBS wheels here, right? Um, and did you go with a bigger diameter then as well? Yes, this is the 18 by 8.5 in the front, 18 by 9.5 in the rear. Okay, so they're still staggered then? They're still staggered, yes. The yeah. Calipers are from a 1M, it's a six piston caliper. Okay. The rotors are from an E46 entry series. Was it a lot of uh, trial and error, or were you uh, just uh, into the research and did looked the at research, the... sat down, and made some jigs? Mm -hmm. You know, this is actually a one-off application. I made my own special adapters. Okay, and uh, it works. Yeah, and it fills out the wheel uh, wheel well really nice. So, did you do you have spacers on this wheel then? On the front, I have ten millimeters. On the rear, I have like a five millimeter just to create a count. Okay. Okay. So. Um, AJ popped the hood on his uh, E30 so we can take a look at the engine here. So what's the history behind this motor? This motor basically came from a salvage E46 M3 low mileage. Okay. It's all original. Internally it's stock, nothing done to it. The yeah, only add-ons I have is a custom-made headers and a custom-made engine system. Okay. So everything else in the interior is basically stock E30 did you dismantle the motor at all and then do any inspection or nah, anything like basically, that? Basically, the only thing I did to the motor, they're prone to have rod bearing issues. Yeah. So all I did was change the rod bearings. Okay. But other than that, it's a perfectly stock motor. It sure is clean. Thank you. Thank you. So this is not your daily driver then? Uh, I've been driving it pretty much every weekend since the year started. Have you really? Yeah, I, I do take it out. You know, originally I had it parked away for a couple of years and I said, you know what, let me take it out. Yeah. Because I feel like I was being selfish. Mm -hmm. you know, it's my car, but I to love it and the stories that I get behind it. And, you know, oh, it makes yeah. me feel good just to bring it up. Well, it's beautiful and it just, it's just wonderful you're sharing it with everybody. Now, I also <laughs> noticed that you removed one of the windshield wipers there, right? Yes. It's also going to tribute to the Evo 3 spec. Okay. You know, they take the mono wipers, what they call it, yeah. for aerodynamics and all that stuff. Normally, this would be straight up. Okay. You know, for the racing. Mm -hmm. you know, I just put it at that angle, and uh, it's one of our features again from an Evo 2. Yeah, and I'm sure you don't relish driving this in the rain, but if you get caught, that it works. It works. It works. It, works. it does a full sweep of the complete windshield. Okay. 
And then you also have uh, this optional um, sway bar in here, yeah, correct? That's, yeah, that's the upper strut version. Um, the chassis are known to flex a little bit. Okay. So I did some added pieces. This piece is from a convertible. Ah, okay. It doesn't normally come with the car. So this is from a convertible. The strut towers have a tendency to bolt in a little bit. Okay. So this is more structural, you know, yeah. as, as well as a glass. Boy, it looks factory the way you did it. Yes, thank you. So it adds a lot of rigidity then to the front end. Yes. Could you notice a significant difference after you install those? Yes, there is a difference. You know, the average E30, you know, they move. So this would be off by maybe a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch. Mm -hmm. So this helps to make the front more rigid. Yeah, and then this is for your camber setting here? This is the camber, yeah. The shock is also adjusted. It's a cone adjustable shock. Okay. So I can adjust the setting. So you have the car sitting a little lower than it normally would. Yes. Okay. It has a ground control coil over it. So I could raise and lower the car. Okay. From here. Well, take off the wheel and I move the thread again. Oh, okay. Then I could raise and lower it. Then I could adjust the stiffness of the shocks from there. Okay. Very cool. And then the interior, let's take a look at that too. The yeah, interior again following the Evo 3 thing. You know, I had the seats done up. Yeah, the seats are beautiful. You know, the cloth is original BMW cloth. Okay. I had the interior in Algeria, I can't call it. Mm -hmm. The door panels are the original door panels from the Evo 3. Wow, okay. Yeah. So you probably sourced those a while ago then. Yes, I mean, they actually end a little no more, and mm -hmm. the price that people want for them is so ridiculous. All that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I did the uh, digital dash. It's stock OEM, but it's got digital features in there. Okay. It's got the glass sunroof, which is, you know. Got to have that. I, I love the sunroof myself. I always like that feature. It's got the Evo 2 seat belts. Okay. You know, these are all things that came with a genuine Evo 2. Mm -hmm. so What's the difference to... between an Evo seat belt and a stock E30 seat belt? The color? The color. Or... Okay. The color. Um, yeah, that fabric is a really nice look. And then, you know, there's some custom stuff. The floor mat is custom. You know, a lot of tweaks, but nothing over the board where it doesn't take away from the period. Yeah. Like yeah, well, when you walk up to the car and just see it from a distance, it looks like an E30 M3. You yes. have no idea how much more horsepower you have here. Which, going on. <laughs> this gives you a lot more horsepower, right? Than it's the dynoed stock. at about 340 to the wheel. Okay, and the stock E30 engine was how much? A little over 200, okay. So you're picking up an extra 150 horsepower with this motor. You think you're picking up more reliability too with this one? Yes. yes. Okay. This motor is, once you change your oil and do the valve adjustments, it's a beautiful motor. And then did you have to upgrade upgrade your gauges? Because obviously you have different uh, yes, RPMs. Yes, I have a custom dash cluster. Okay. That now goes to 9,000 RPM. All right. Some digital features for the oil temperature, oil pressure, fuel pressure. Mm -hmm. So all of those are added, but they're still period correct. So if you look at the interior, you won't even notice that it's done. Okay. Yeah, and I noticed some of the older E30s were prone to cracking on the dashboard, but uh, this looks beautiful. I've been so. lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been very lucky. So with the upgraded engine, with your uh, sway bars, with your upgraded um, suspension system where you can adjust it, mm -hmm. and uh, you said you put some sway bars in the back too? Yeah, it's got the full ground control setup. Okay. Front and rear sway bar, chassis reinforcement, you know, some bigger yeah. bars are reinforced. And um, have the full M3 coupe from the Z3. Okay. The control arms from the back. So, you know, I try to put as much modern pieces on the car. Mm -hmm. you know, to give it the, the modern feel. But so driving this, have you driven a stock E30 and this and compared the two to see what their differences are or how different they are? Well, the handling is the same pretty much. Okay. Right. It's a little bias to the front because the front is a little bit heavier because it's a heavier motor. Mm -hmm. But that could be dialed out with you know, adjusting the corner weights and doing little things like that. Okay. But overall, it's pretty much E30 and 3 but on steroids. You know. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. I the bet bigger it's... brakes, the more power. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more fun. The original engine was not a torquey engine. It was more like a high RPM, get wound up and go motor. Yeah. So you probably had more vibration then too. Yes. The difference with this is from 2000 RPM, I have torque. I could torque. 
So, mm -hmm. so it's a much more fun car to drive. So are you getting a chirp in second gear? Uh, On a cool day like today, first, second, and third. Nice. <laughs> nice. So you're always smiling driving this car, I would oh, think. One of the beauty about this car is just cruising on the highway mm -hmm. and the people that pull up to you and the thumbs up and the videos they're taking. It's just like, yeah. it's sharing, you know, it's a lot it of is. fun. You don't even want to drive as fast. You want people to take it in. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of fun. But a car like this uh, really appeals more to the senses, right? I mean, some of the newer cars are so synthetic almost and they do everything for you with all the computers. This one's a little more, I guess, analog is the right word, it's, but driving it, you feel the it's road. A, it's a driver's car. Yeah. You know, you control the car. The car doesn't control you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no traction control, this, this, that, all of that stuff. So you have to feel what's going on with the car. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, stay within the limits of the car and you'll be in one piece. So knowing that this car is going up in value virtually monthly, maybe even weekly, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's so much fun to drive, and you've got an extra 150 horsepower, you got the upgraded suspension. So you've got a lot of modern components that would make this car easier to drive at a faster speed. Do you uh, want to push it sometimes? I mean, you have the racing background, so you're a professional. I, I do push it every time I take it out. Okay. I go to events. I go to Pocono Raceway. You know, I do okay. all kind of. Yeah. It it looks beautiful. It's a nice car, but it's driven. Yeah. It gets driven. You know. Well, that's great. It, so, it, are you doing autocrosses with it then? No, or? that I don't. Do. Okay, you're doing track days though. Track days, you know, okay. Car show events, mm -hmm. you know, rolling road events, and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it, it's to be enjoyed. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a factor like you know, if I hit it or something, go back and I fix it again. But you want to enjoy the car. So you know, there's, there's pros and cons. Now. And you have other BMWs then too. So have you become a real BMW guy? Yeah, well, basically, my son and I, we have a business, Autocraft. Okay. And we specialize in BMWs, all generation, new, old. We actually have the record right now for the new M3, the G80 M3. Yes. Um, we have the record for the most horsepower from a stock motor. No kidding. So what would that be? 865 to the wheel. Wow. Just, uh, you know, increased fuel, upgraded turbo, but the motor itself is stock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because out of the factory, what is the G80 horsepower? Yeah, they claim a little over 500, 500. Okay. Wow, so you added over 300 horsepower to the G80? How does it drive? Is it... Uh, Just like stuff. Really? You can't even tell. So, this is, uh, you know, it's not a garage queen. It's it sure weird. looks like one <laughs> inch. <laughs> this is no, not a garage queen. You know, I take it out. I take it for uh -huh. a long drive. I drive to Pocono with it. I drive to Maryland. Okay. You know, I go everywhere with it. That's fantastic. And um, I have another one, which is all original stock, 54,000 miles. Uh, E30, M3, same all original. Same year, same color, same everything. Wow. That's the queen. Okay. <laughs> That's the one you have in your living room then? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But, but this is yeah. what we do. So, you know, anyone needs an old car restored or a new car service, mm -hmm. you know, my son and I from Autocraft. Okay. You know, we do we do it all. Awesome. It's a father and son thing. We get our own personal attention. So, you know, once the car comes in, it's our car. We treat it like our car. Well, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to feature this video on our YouTube channel and also on our site. You'll have a collection page, and we'll put Autocraft on there. And yeah, hopefully sure. you can share your other BMWs, especially the Garage Queen. Uh, <laughs> everybody would love that because this is a very popular car uh, on the Internet. So thank you, AJ. Appreciate all your time. Thank it was you a pleasure very much. talking to you. Nice talking to you.